So what am I doing to prepare for the final steps in the demolition of the United States? If you haven't watched my previous video, I talked about uh, what's happening as far as the demolition of the United States and how it is intentional. And, uh, and we're going to be in a world of hurt. Uh, you've, heard, you've heard it everywhere, but you know, I'm, I'm, all the pieces have been put together at this point. And uh, I hate to say it, uh, it's, we're doomed. <laughs> I love the Canadian pepper. Your daily dose of doom and gloom. So what have I done over the years? And, and just I just want to go blow by blow. Well, the first thing was uh, I got rid of my car when used car prices were high and I bought a gas sipper. I knew that gas prices someday were going to hit $6 a gallon. And I think we're going to see that now very soon with the OPEC uh, oil cuts, uh, the Keystone Pipeline gone, the limited production that we have in the United States, uh, the strategic oil reserve being res uh, depleted, uh, and then of course you've got Russia who's cut their production by 500,000 barrels and also they've really cut their oil supply from, from Europe and, uh, and of course the United States. So um, I, don't, I don't see how you're not going to see some really high and very soon uh, gas prices. Um, so, and then the other thing that I got was a Honda ADV 150 motorcycle, uh, and uh, it gets 100 miles to the gallon. So, with the, between the Prius Prime getting 85 miles to the gallon and, and being able to travel 44 miles here in Florida, or 45 actually, on a, just an electric charge, that's about the best I could do for transportation. And of course, I got a bicycle, but you know, unfortunately, my house, I'm not living, thank God, I'm not living in the city. Oh, there goes the hat. And I, uh, so, you know, it's good that, that I don't have to worry about that. But, so, but I, what I'm saying is I can't ride the bicycle. <laughs> this looks ridiculous, doesn't it? You know what, I'm going to leave it like that. I, I kind of like it. Looks good, because I can see my reflection in the, uh, in the back of the phone here. Kind of, kind of looks like I got a, like an earring here. Let's tuck, tuck it right behind the ear, yeah. All right, I'll do that while I'm talking. So that's, uh, that's the first thing. Um, so transportation, I've taken care of that. All right, wasn't my intention to make this video in clips, but I think this will be good. So this is the financial <clears throat> aspect of what I've been doing to try to prepare for <clears throat> what I think was some dark times ahead uh, for the United States. Uh, basically a worthless dollar, a, um, a, a crumbling uh, bank infrastructure. Uh, the, the advent of the digital dollar, uh, you know, it's uh, the scarcity of food, you know, all of these things, uh, they, they, you know, I'm going to get into, I got to figure out how I'm going to put this video together. <clears throat> but so financially, you know, the, the thing that you had to do, and you still got some time left, although not much, uh, was you had to convert your, your worthless dollars into uh, hard assets as much as possible uh, now of course the problem is you still got to keep cash on the side uh, for when things do crash the, the, the question is is how rapidly is it going to crash you know because you if you ever watch uh, some of the other youtubers they say they're keeping their cash on the side for uh, so then they can go out and scoop up all of the cheap uh, assets well if your dollars are worthless if it happens rapidly which i think it will because <clears throat> right now that you know Everybody's selling their uh, treasuries around the world. Everybody's de-dollarizing. I think this thing's going to boomerang quick, a lot quicker than they're expecting. And so how fast are they going to be able to go out and buy real estate with those dollars that are worthless? That's my question. Maybe uh, forward this to the economic ninja and see what his answer is. I do watch his channel from time to time. Or, uh, or my orcas or um, even Alex. Uh, and, all right, so let's or or Mark Moss, I watch him too. So you know how how fast are you going to be able to pounce as the dollar devalues and use those those ever devaluing dollars, especially if you got hyperinflation, to buy buy up real estate and stuff. I don't, I don't know. You tell me. I I prefer to try to get as much of my money into uh, three categories. Well, for me, it's just two. Uh, I wish I could invest in well you too late for real estate i mean it's 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 on its way down It'd be a terrible time to be buying real estate right now <clears throat> but uh you know years passed before when interest rates were at zero and uh, the, the price of real estate wasn't sky high probably back in 
well, I'd say 2020 or so, you, that might have been a good time to buy maybe some real estate. I don't know. Even then, I don't think it would have been a good deal for you. So, precious metals. That's where I went. And uh, as much as possible. And I've, I've been scooping it up uh, over over my pretty much my lifetime. But I here recently, I've been, well, in the last three three or so years before I broke my neck, I, of course, that was a hiatus. <laughs> I wasn't buying anything then. Hell, I was just trying to live. But uh, so, yeah, so I, I bought into precious metals as much as I could. Um, and then, of course, stocks. Now, what stocks? You, you're not going to want tech stocks. You certainly don't want banking stocks. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of stupid people. I bet there's people out there going, Toronto, Dominion Bank, that's a good place to buy, put my money because the stock's way down. Oh, my God, there are some stupid people around. Oh, I've been buying into the uh, the mining stocks, and uh, so how do you get a list of the mining stocks? I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not Rick Rule, man. I mean, if you want to learn about mining stocks, or or, or even, uh, you know, not 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 necessarily mining, but anything to do with uh, commodities for the most part, uh, he's he's your go-to guy. So I just watch the professionals. I've watched him, and uh, he's made uh, occasional recommends. Uh, the Ninja actually made a. A couple of recommends and I looked into as best I could you know I'm not uh, and I bought those I gave a video a while back on the ticker symbols I was investing into a lot of them are mining stocks uh, you know oil stocks uh, anything with commodity related I, I don't see how you're gonna lose on that <clears throat> but uh, unless they go out of business with this uh, economic collapse which a lot of them will you know there's no, no doubt so that's why you sprinkle a little bit all around so that's kind of the two places that I'm at is and then of course regular goods okay uh, take your money while you still worth something and stock up baby you know I I bought you know mountain house for my food uh, uh, you know I, you might want to go for Patriots or whatever but I've got a year's supply of mountain house now at my house it's expensive and it's gone up you know, I was picking them up for six dollars. Then it went to eight, and then now it's it's, it's like eleven or twelve a package. You know, but that's still pretty cheap. That's a couple of meals for twelve bucks. Go to McDonald's and buy a cheeseburger. See how much that costs these days. <clears throat> so then, uh, stock up on toilet paper. All right. See, I, I luckily my wife uh, divorced me while I was in the hospital, and so that was a great thing. I got all of that. All the house is just for storage, and so. Yeah, I bought extra laundry detergent, uh, dishwasher. I, you know, I go around the house and I think, you know what, I, I could use a couple more of these. Uh, could be three bottles of um, apple cider vinegar, you know, anything that's going to keep a while. Canned goods, you know. And then, of course, what I do is I write the dates on especially anything that can expire, food-wise, and I uh, try to use up the, the most recent dates first. Now, I'm just one dude, so, you know, i got to work through it. So I can only keep a limited amount of canned goods and stuff like that. But the, the stuff that doesn't perish, stock up on it, man. Stock up on it. <clears throat> so that's uh, that's the three places that financially you can go. And that, that's it for this clip. Uh, I can't remember. There was a third category because there's actually a video by Ray Dalio. And uh, he talks about the death of an empire. And, of course, we are in the final stages uh, if you ever watch his video uh, of the death of the U.S. Empire, uh, according to, to what I... He didn't say that in his video, okay? He just was talking about empires throughout history. And, you know, I'm placing us on that final trajectory downward, uh, on an exponential curve, uh, heading down within the next year or two, maybe. I hope we make it two years, but I don't think we will. So the next topic I want to discuss is security, all right? What are you doing for your security? Because when the world, when the United States melts down, there's going to be a lot of desperate people out there. And if you watch um, Jeremiah Babe, there you go. And uh, he's always talking about, you know, security. I don't know why he's still in California. <laughs> you know, so, uh, good, good luck to him. I mean, I wouldn't want to be where he's at. Uh, so, <clears throat> you know, do you have an external alarm system but how effective is that if your if your electricity goes out or your your service is not there anymore uh you know are you, are you going to be able to watch those cameras on your cell phone you know i i 
that's why I've been hesitant to buy into these new systems is everything's tied into your cell phone. I, I would much prefer to have my own uh, monitoring station inside the house but where I could uh, look at the computer and be able to see what's going on. And some of them do provide that. I, I just don't know what to tell you. Right now, I, my security system's sitting on a table at home and I'm not even sure what the capabilities are. It was something that was in my mom's house and I just haven't had time to, to look into it because I've been busy with other things. Uh, so what are the avenues uh, that uh, somebody can get into your house? You know what, before I get into that, there was two other, couple other financial things. And, uh, and Ninja does tell you this, is sprinkle your money around in different banks. I think I've got uh, five banks that I've got my, my, well, credit unions for the most part. Uh, five credit unions that I deal with and I've, I've been sprinkling my money among them. Now, I don't have 250000 I'm not, so it's not like I need to worry about the amount. I just want, you know, different avenues to be able to get at the limited amount of funds that I do have in the bank. Uh, and it's not much, you know, when, when you consider the billionaires and millionaires and, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. No, I, you know, I'm talking $50,000 and I just, yeah, and of course six banks. But you know what, the, those bank, those credit unions all offer different deals. And so getting back to security. So what are the avenues that people can break into your house with? I, I've got another video that I put together. I might throw that up with, with this series. Is door armor. You can buy door armor. I, at least I think you still can. I don't know. At, at, at uh, Amazon. <clears throat> and what that'll do is it'll reinforce the, uh, the the door so that you just can't kick the front door in and, and gain entry to the house in two seconds. I mean, it, literally, they'd have to bust the frame down. And I've got that installed on my front door. Then, of course, the windows. <clears throat> how easy is it to get in through your windows? And how how well protected are they? You know, do you have some thorn bushes in front of your windows for the, that they're going to have to climb through to get to the windows? That's something you might want to think about. <clears throat> so, uh, and then of course, once they get through the windows, what are they going to run into? Just a nice open floor where they can just run along the house? Or maybe do you want to put some nail boards down? Now, I'm not talking right now, but I'm talking when, the, when there's people running around the streets burning everything. I think I'd take some boards, drive some nails through them, and just put them right below the windows so that when that burglar comes in, Boom! That that foot, that, those nails are going to go right through their feet. So these are some things that you can do. Now the the other thing that I did is I put in impact resistant bulletproof windows on my house, and uh, so it's going to take them a couple of blows to get through. I mean, if you take a sledgehammer to a, a impact resistant window, they're going to get through it, but they're going to wake me up. I'm going to have time, and that's the other thing. Do you have weapons? Is there, is there a baseball bat sitting by the front door? Do you have some knives that you can quickly grab a hold of? That especially maybe some throwing knives if you don't want, want to have a gun, you know. I, I keep uh, guns around my house, so, you know, I, that, that's just, uh, just me. I don't have any kids, so I don't have to worry about it. And, you know, I, I, it, I don't see where a locked gun is going to do you much good if you've got regular windows and no, no way to to impede that burglar coming in rapidly to your house uh you know are you gonna wake up pick the lock get to your gun in time and how are you keeping it loaded that would be another thing so okay so the burglar busts through the window he's in and let's say 60 seconds maybe let's let's just say it takes him two minutes the ruckus has woken you up now so now you're you're going, oh, get the gun, get the gun. So you get over, you got the key, or where's the damn key? Where's the key to get to the lock? You know, you see, you get, finally you get the lock open, then, then where, where's the ammo? Guess what? <laughs> he's, he's in the bedroom now, and you're dead. So that's, uh, and so that's when they, when they say gun safety. I understand if you got kids, but, you know, maybe you should educate those kids and just, you know, hopefully you can trust them in some fashion. I understand if the kid blows his head off, you're going to jail. But at the same time, I know a lot of uh, a lot of people that have educated their kids and have taken them out and taught them how to use a weapon, and, and they feel very confident. And and also, they you might just want your kid to be able to get to that gun. And I'm not saying this to to, to promote this in any way, shape, or fashion, because that, that, that somebody'd say. Well, the kid got to the gun and blew his head off, and you're, it's all the, your fault. No, no, no. You, As a parent, you have to be the judge of, of that. Not me. You don't listen to me. I'm just a dude talking on a cell phone on YouTube. So that's the next uh, thing to think about is security. 
Uh, and then of course car security what's what's your car security okay I you know you can carry a loaded gun in your car if you've got concealed carry but are you gonna be able to get to that gun because you can't keep it out where it's where it's visible right uh, if you can get to it um, that's cool that's a good way to, 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 to protect it but there's so many uh, if you're gonna be traveling these Democrat states gee, good Lord you probably end up in jail for the rest of your life for carrying a gun into a Democrat state yeah, so you got to think about that. So what I do is I keep a K-bar knife lodged in the seat right beside me in the, in the passenger side. So at least if somebody's carjacking me, I got a knife. Now, am I going to be able to employ it to, to defend myself? Probably not, but gives me an option, right? An option that you probably don't have. So that, that's I'm talking about the car security. Uh, of course, you know, you got those stupid automatic locks, you know, I, I hate that crap, at least, but if that's true, at least they can't yank the door open, they got to bust through the window at least to get to you, and, you know, and that's another thing, there's a lot of tips about driving cars that you, especially in a, in a city these days, or a Democrat, a Democrat city, holy shit, now, make sure that you've got uh, the ability to bail, okay, when I say the ability to bail, you're coming up to a stoplight, all right now is the lane to the left of you open so that if, if somebody comes out at at your car you know and you, hopefully you'll see them coming because you should be doing situational awareness and kind of checking around you okay so if you see somebody storming your car you want to be able to get the hell out of there right so you can bail to that left lane or do you have a shoulder that you can get onto so that means you got to leave enough room between you and the car in front of you to be able to turn that wheel and get the hell out of the way just one little simple tip, right? So these are the things that you need to be thinking about, uh, you know, as far as you know, driving vehicles. So security, security, security. You know, you you use your imagination on, on the things that you might want to consider uh, for your security for your house. So the garage door. What's your garage door look like? Is it one of them just thin aluminum? Of course, here in Florida, mine's <laughs> mine would take a freaking bomb. I mean, because it's it's a hurricane-proof garage door. I mean, the, the plates on the thing are, are longer than that, that right? I mean, I'm halfway up my arm. So, I mean, good Lord, I, you know, it, it would take one hell of a blow to get through my garage door. But what's yours look like? You know, can they just uh, tear through that aluminum real easily? Of course, I mean, you could probably drive a vehicle through my garage door, but good Lord, I'd think about the damage that it would do. <laughs> well, to the to the house, to the to their car, to their vehicle. I mean, and then they'd still have to get through because I've got the door reinforced from the garage to the house. So, and there's no windows in my garage. So, yeah, do you have windows in your garage that they can break in? You know, do you want to put some sort of interior uh, protection against them being able to come in through your garage windows? So I'm just telling you to use your imagination and start thinking about things. Let's say that, you know, the, the zombie apocalypse is going on outside your house. You know, what are the easy ways that those zombies are going to get into your house if they decide that there's people in the house that they want to eat? That's it. That's for security. And, of course, cameras, security system, uh, whatever you can do. All right. You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time, run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician, Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.